Hey lovelies, happy Friday. So I wanted to talk about something this afternoon. Um, well, I guess it's early evening now. So I want to talk about something that I think is very, very important. Um, I think we find ourselves captivated with pleasure. Um, I posted a couple days ago about how we run towards pleasure um, very easily, very quickly. Um, and we can definitely be so moved by pleasure. And um, I think a lot of times we really don't realize having this so-called um, focus on moving towards pleasure and running from pain definitely can cost you a lot more pain than we care to admit. So I'm Carla Nicole, just want to drop something on you really fast. Sometimes we can find ourselves wanting to get so caught up in how something, someone uh, feels or is always cultivating this excitement inside of us. Um, you know, sometimes we can get so caught up in someone, like somebody that we're interested in, we can get caught up in the fact that when I'm around them or when I'm with them, um, everything is about pleasure. Everything surrounds that person. Um, it's just like we can't do without it because it's a pleasure-based relationship or it's a pleasure-based thing that we're so um, cultivated with. And I think sometimes we, we lose focus on how important it is that we don't get too caught up in wanting to be around or surround ourselves with mere pleasure all the time. You know, pain that we run from teaches some things. It teaches us stuff. Understand, it teaches us a lot. When you have experienced pain, grief, loss, disappointment, um, misunderstandings, when you go through some pain and you understand like, dang, I didn't realize that I had went through some stuff, that this, this, this hurt me. Um, you end up getting wisdom from it because you end up strengthening your inner soul. You end up strengthening what you, what you thought was so fragile. You know, when you're only around people that make you feel good, yes, people, it can it can really inflate your ego it can really get you to a point where you're not humble and people get to the point where they don't want to stand you because you're really over the top people don't want to be bothered with someone that thinks that they're all that so what happens we want to get so caught up in someone being around us because hey I feel that I need cheerleaders in my life I feel I want somebody to pat me on the back all the time what about the people that tell you hey you're wrong or perhaps you need to think about something on a it, it, from a different perspective maybe you need to expand your knowledge hey I want you to try to challenge yourself to do this or challenge yourself to do that you know when you have people like that in your life you expand you improve you and you actually get better and become a better version of you when we sit around people that constantly compliment constantly want to be around us for something they want to gain from us it's really not to our advantage because those people are around to gain something they want something from you but when you have people around you that are honest open and honest and telling you hey look this is off you need to work on this um, I would encourage you to do this those kind of people around you are the ones that really truly care See, when you focus on only being focused on pain, okay, scratch that pleasure, we get so driven, like, oh my God, I want to be around that or that person or that activity. And sometimes when you're cultivated in that, you find yourself like, dang, I didn't realize how much I love being around this particular situation. Hey, Terry, welcome. So glad you're here. So when you're so ca caught up in wanting to be around pleasure, we lose sight, big time. We lose sight and we want to have people to encourage us to be a better us. Um, I always tell my kids, you know, when you have friends, have those friends that really, really, really care about you and will be honest with you. You don't want somebody helping your ego get any bigger than it already is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We want to get 
get there and 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 figure out a way to improve our life hey phyllis hey Gigi, you're not late babe you're all good this is a pop-up i just did this on a whim so you're not late babe so i'm just talking about how we can get so caught up in wanting to be around pleasure and run away from pain but what i'm telling everybody this evening hey mookie glad to see you love we're so cultivated with trying to get um away from pain to the point where we're running from it we're running from grief we're running from disappointment we're running from uh hardship and we don't realize that those experiences make us stronger okay so we learn we learn from pain we learn and experience from pain yeah i'm blues girl i'm blues today i'm blues today so we learn from oh my gosh i see now i have went through some hardships and phyllis will tell you you know i have wrote about this i had i went through a, a troubled a, you know a troubled time in my life so when i went through that i have had some turbulence but you know my dad used to tell me you're not tough enough but of course my dad is honest with me having a father that doesn't give me everything i want and said no a lot helped me a lot trust me but my dad was like, you're not tough enough. Get tougher. You're not tough enough. And I thought, me? I'm pretty tough, you know. But when I went through that storm with my marriage, my dad was like, you know what? You tough as nails now. <laughs> so I felt a lot better. Like, yes, I am tough as nails now because I actually went through something to toughen me up. You know, um, uh, you know, I have a friend that, you know, has, has a daughter that she is so green, bless her heart. Just a beautiful girl, but you know, she ain't never been told no. Never. You hear me? Never been told no. Um, she just isn't very worldly. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, you guys need to home college that child because she is going to be, oh my God, caught up in um, wanting everything to be picture perfect and that's just not what life is you know one of the things about me is when i when i had left my home with my parents you know my parents had me pretty much um in a, in a sheltered environment i mean I, I was around pretty much no dysfunction at all it was all about you know making sure i had a very good home life and i'm thankful for that but i had to break free from the naivete that i had because i was very naive you know what I mean? So I wanted to make sure with my daughter that when I let her out into the world, especially the world today versus the world I grew up in, I wanted her to come into this world ready to tackle whatever it is she had to go through so she could be strong, you know? Um, but I wanted to prepare her and, and explain to her that, you know, um, being a single mom, I had moments where I was struggling financially struggling we didn't have a water on or we had stuff going on that you know maybe everybody didn't else else didn't have to deal with but i had my struggles and my daughter went with it went through it with me so she knows okay what do we need to do to problem solve this issue these are things that i believe it it, it prepared her so when she got out on her own she knew how to say well if something happens or goes awry i'm not going to just die because something went wrong you know you want your kids to know that hey you'll be okay no matter what unfortunate or unexpected event happens you want to make sure they're prepared so um the reason why i just think some people uh really run away from you know really really totally run away from pain because they don't want to feel pain but it's like do you understand life comes with that <laughs> you know that's like saying um, I mean, we don't ever want to feel joy. Well, if you've never felt joy, you don't know how happy that is or how joyful that is. So we have to experience some things. We have to experience pain and pain is okay. Actually, like I said, pain can teach us some things, you know, um, and then not to mention a lot of times when we are so pleasure driven, um, we can get reckless. So now I'm going to go into the heartbeat of, let's just talk about sexuality. When you are driven 
totally by your sexuality or you're driven by intimacy or being close with a, man, a woman or a man versus who, whatever you're into and you are only focused on sexual enjoyment and you're in relationships with the person you're with or with people you're you know you're involved with and you're sitting here like yes I'm only focused on the sexual part or the enjoying part but I don't want to I don't want to be around my mate or my partner when my mate or partner is challenging me to do some things or disagreeing with me or has a different perspective than me I don't want to be a bother with him I'm gonna leave and go shopping I don't want to be bothered with him when he's doing that but when he's making love to me then I'm happy with it no you have to understand in relationships especially in love relationships we have moments where we're going to be challenged we're going to have we're going to have a difference of opinion we're going to get angry we're going to disagree we're going to argue all of these things need to be up front and understood before we get into the heartbeat of a relationship but a lot of us don't see it that way because in the beginning it's all what you know beautiful right it's all about oh we make love all the time and everything feels good and my man gets me this and my woman does this for me and all of those things which are nice but over the course of the years you do understand that the, the, the all that excitement starts to level off and if your relationship is only based off of the pleasure what happens it's over because now you know we're doing more arguing than, than we should be or we're doing more disagreeing than I feel we should be your relationships are gonna go through stages of discontent or you just not gonna get along with each other or you're gonna have issues with each other you're gonna feel some kind of way with each other and then you're gonna be like well I don't want to be around him because he gets on my nerves I hear a lot of women say that when they're in relationships over a, you know over a series of years Oh, you're not so giddy and, and excited over him no more, huh? So what happened? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What happened? Oh, he don't feel so good. Now the love making ain't the primary thing you think about. Now you're thinking about bills. You're thinking about how he argues with you or challenges you. You're, you're aggravated by the way the operation of the home is going. I don't like that he's not this or he's not buying me that or he won't let me do this and that. You know, all of that stuff comes with relationships. But when we're, when we're so hell-bent on the pleasuring part of the relationship and we get involved with it, we find ourselves so cultivated in that that we lose sight that, no, relationships go through phases, just like anything else. I mean, and so we have to be um, pretty much realistic when it comes to that. A lot of times, we don't. When we go down the aisle, I'm just going to bring it out there, when we go down the aisle, we're not thinking about the arguments. We're not thinking about that. We're not thinking about, well, what are we going to do if one of us become infertile? We're not thinking about that either. We're not thinking about, well, what if this person cheats on me? We're not thinking about that. We're not thinking about, well, what if, what if, what if my best friend uh, gets my man or gets my woman involved with some mess that I have to clean up? We don't think about that. When we go down that aisle, we're thinking about the honeymoon and how beautiful it's going to be. We're going to this island. We're going to do this. We're going to have this much fun. Hey, Jay and Ari, thanks, love. So we're going to have this much fun. We're going to be doing this and that and all this love making and we ain't got no obligations. And then after you leave the honeymoon and you come home to reality and the bills start raking in, the obligation starts happening, the disagreements start happening, the sex becomes less. You're like, well, what happened? And then lo and behold, you get pregnant. And then the, the sex is really challenged because now it's like, well, we can only have sex only when this happens or and then the further along in the pregnancy, it starts to diminish even further. All this stuff happens, man, but we don't look at it from that point. So I think it's a very, very important that when we are excited about relationships, we're really looking at it through a realistic eye. I also talked something about today about marriage. A lot of people are wanting to get married okay I want to put this out here because I'm seeing a lot of people desiring marriage and I want to put it out there and explain marriage is a beautiful union yes but marriage is not the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow okay a lot of times we are thinking that marriage is going to have us on a whole nother level and it can be on another level if both parties 
are in the sync with what each other wants to do. And then there also has to be a level of spiritual balance on both parts. You can't go in a marriage and not, and not um, have a spiritual foundation or have a spiritual permission. I mean, a lot of times we go down the aisle not asking God for nothing. We just want to do it because we want to do it. Based off of what? You getting married, why? Do you know what marriage is? A lot of times I hear a lot of women say they want to get married. Do they know what that means? <laughs> do you know what marriage means? Marriage is not something that is just, oh, we are um, financially together, so he'll take care of my bills and then we'll be able to have sex on a regular and without headache. And then we'll also be, you know, helpmates to each other. Not always. Marriage isn't always black and white like this picture here. So we have to get over that. We have to look at it for what it truly is. So now I'm going back to what I said earlier, which is it's not all about the pleasure when it comes to marriage. Marriage is going to go through some pain. You hear me? And if you both are not willing to endure the pain together without turning your back on each other, the marriage isn't going to work. I don't care if you go down the aisle, if you legally set it, if you get the ring, if you go and do all that you are supposed to do, you get your, your finances together, together to buy the diamond and all that doesn't mean nothing if you two are not in sync. So again, that comes down to are we looking at wanting and desiring marriage based off of the beauty and the pleasure or are we looking at it realistically? A lot of times we are not looking at it realistically. We are looking at it based upon how great it's going to make us feel. He's going to make me feel good. She's going to be there for me. What if she's not? What if they're not? Do you ever think about that? No. When you go down the aisle, you expect that your spouse is going to be, in your mind, what you want them to be. Mm -mm. Not happening. <laughs> And it doesn't even have to be, it doesn't even have to be marriage. It could just be relationships. Tell you what, whenever we get to the, to the point where we desire, um, relationship and I don't even call it marriage anymore. I'm basically saying, find somebody that cultivates your needs. Now here's the clue. Here's the clue. And this is a, this is a nugget I'm giving for free. If you desire to have a relationship be it long-term relationship, cultivated, healthy, long-term, beautiful relationship, you must be driven by your needs, not your wants. Okay? Your needs, not your wants. Because our wants is not what is going to keep the relationship moving. In other words, when you get your bills paid at home, you got to make sure your needs are met first that applies in marriage relationship long-term life partners whatever it is you're desiring to be in that requires you to be in sync at the point where you're focused on your needs not your wants okay so first this is why the alone series was so important i was encouraging people to do the work on themselves first so when you do the work on you you get to know what are my needs. What do I need? Not what do I want? What do I need? And see, a lot of times we are taught, and I'm going to put us women out here real quick on Front Street. We are taught as women, okay, that we want a man to provide for us and protect. Provide, protect. Provide, protect. Problem is, when we get into these situations where we're, we're desiring to be with a man who provides and protects, we're only focusing on how much he's making and how good of a, a protector he could be for us. Rather than seeking to figure out what it is we need, not what do we want. Because it's easy. Let, women, we have uh, wants that are endless. I can go on and on and on about what we want. And it will be, we'll be here all night. But when you talk about, well, what do you need? Well, I, I need some things. You know what I'm saying? I need some things. I need to make sure that you care about me. Number one, is there a level of care here? And care don't cost money. <laughs> care costs time. 
care costs time. So that means, are you willing to share your time? Not your, not your credit card, your black card, not your car that you drive around, your little sports car, not how much money you got in your bank. I don't want none of that. I want to know, can you share your time with me? Can you? Is that possible? Is it possible you can give me your time? Now, time will show me. Yes, Gigi, time will show me. In time. See, this is the value of engagement. All of us want to get engaged like ladies. Oh, my God, I got my diamond and diamonds are forever and I got my man. And da, da, da. No, did you engage? I'm not talking about engagement on your ring and all that. I'm talking about did you engage with each other? Do you know him? I mean, really know him. Can you finish his sentences? Can you feel when something's not right with him? You know, my daughter is 18 and she, or 19, getting ready to be 19. And her boyfriend is 18. And do you know she knows when something's wrong with him based off of a text message? I said, how the hell do you know when your man is, there's something wrong? She said, well, mom, he texts different. <laughs> what, child? He texts different. I can feel it. I know, mom. Wow. Okay. That's a whole nother level, baby girl. I didn't know you could read your man based off of how he texts. She said, yeah, mom. You know him. A lot of us don't know the man we're with. We don't. We don't know when he's feeling furious, angry, upset, because we're not in touch enough. But we know when he cares about us based upon what he does. And a lot of our problem, and this is women I'm talking about right now, is a lot of our problem is we misconstrue what love feels like from a man. We really don't know what it feels like. We think that it's when he buys something for us. We think we think it's when he gives, does kind acts for us. Mm -mm. You know what a man told me one time? He said to me, and I thought it was powerful. He said, a man protects what he loves. So what does that mean? If I'm not, if I'm not somewhere and he's somewhere, and someone dogs my name, he will go to bat for me. And I know on several occasions that that happened. I'm talking about just men in general that care about me. Not based upon love relationship. I'm talking about a man that cared about me. He went to bat for me. He will, he will speak well of my name when I'm not there. He can speak for me even when I'm not able to speak. That's care. Men care differently than women understand. So we're thinking if a man's buying us stuff, that's showing us he loves us, but they ain't got shit to do with it. He's been conditioned to understand that women want things. But that's not what women need. Women need to know that they're cared for. But that's not out here. Nobody's really putting that on K Jewelers uh, commercials. So nobody really knows. The gentlemen don't really know that, oh, it requires for me to care, to give a damn. I know a lot of women in relationships right now, their man don't give a damn about them. Will buy them whatever they want. Because you know why? Because he gets perks for when he buys stuff for her. And then he goes and cares for another woman up the road or a couple cities over. That's who he cares about. But he's buying her. No, unacceptable. But that's because she doesn't understand what love is or how men show love. Men show love based upon protecting you. And they protect your name. They protect your character. They protect you from outside flaws. They will spiritually protect you. Y'all don't hear me though. I know men right now that will spiritually protect me and I don't know nothing about it. I could be busy doing something else and a, a bad spiritual person is trying to come in my realm and they get dealt with and I, I don't even know nothing about it because I have men that protect me why because they care about me and that is the way they show they care and love me but we don't talk about that level of love all we care about is how much he spends on me what kind of car he's driving so men that have the money to go out and buy vehicles that look the part no, they can get the women. Period. 
but he don't have to care about her. <laughs> he don't have to care about her. He don't have to love her. And he can take her down the aisle and all of those things and give a hoot about her. But have a side chick that he loves and cares about. I'm trying to tell y'all something. I want y'all to get away from this pleasure-based stuff because y'all don't hear me. It is very vitally important we get smart on understanding what the what way does a man love you. Men love you based off of protection. How does, how does men know a woman loves him? I can tell you very easily. A woman that loves a man makes sure at all times that she cares about him. If he's sick, she will take soup over there and make sure he's good. If she cares, she will do, she will do for him. Not to get no brownie points because she legitimately cares and gives a damn about him. She will do those things. But people don't really sit down and really pay attention. You know, ladies that flaunt their little bodies and stuff and, and shake it like a tot and all that. And, and, and flaunt boobs and all this stuff. And dudes flock to it. But then he's got one over here that take, gives a damn about him and will do anything for him. He won't acknowledge that. Because he's so driven by the pleasure of eyes or pleasure of what it feels like. And that's how you get reckless. That's how you get reckless. It's very important that we're mindful that we understand what is it that we truly need. Not what we want. Because it's easy to get cultivated and ca captivated by what we, what we want. A man can look the part, girl, he can be sharp, smell good, have a nice ride, beautiful home, and be an asshole. Matter of fact, he can be controlling, which is even worse. He can be a woman beater. <laughs> he can be a lot of things. Not saying that all men are that, because you know I don't play that. But I'm saying as an example, we can get caught up in wanting something so bad that we will... Disregard a man that cares because he's not gonna, he don't have everything I want. I want this, I want that. Okay, you're gonna get what you want, but you're also gonna get what you don't want, which is sometimes a nuisance. We have to be mindful of what we're asking for, but first we have to spend time alone and to ourselves to understand what it is we need. Once we understand what we need, I'm trying to tell y'all something. Once you understand what you need, you are now out of the imbalance of wanting only pleasure in your life. Because now you're in a neutral space, so you're balanced. So now if a gentleman tries to hit me up on Facebook and say, Hey girl, you know, and hits me with his fine self, looking all sexy, talking about, Hey girl, you know, can I take you out? No, nah, boo, I'm not impressed with how, how good you look. That don't mean nothing to me. You look good though. I mean, I appreciate it. I appreciate your old sexy fine pictures all on my on my Facebook messenger inbox. But you got to come with something else than that. Because I'm not I'm not caught up by how good good you look. Understand? I'm around fine brothers all the time, so that doesn't impress me. And they don't know what to do with that because they're so conditioned to believe that women are only driven by money, fine cars, Okay, how much cash he got, what kind of what kind of home he's in. So if he comes to me, flaunting that shit don't mean nothing to me. That don't mean nothing to me. I don't give a damn about your cars. I can care less about, oh, I'll appreciate it. Oh, that's a nice vehicle, but that's not going to move me to want to be with you because you got a car. That don't impress me because I'm not moved by no wants like that. But do you know women will sacrifice their peace? You hear me? Sacrifice their peace to get in a convertible? Really? You gonna sacrifice your peace to get in that convertible with him and you don't know him from Adam just because you think he got money? That car could be leased. That could be his brother's car. He could be broke. And you out here riding around with him because you think you that dude's got something. We gotta learn to start living our life based upon what we need. And then we have to learn to send the prayers up and make sure we are in spiritual in spiritual alignment with God. See, this is very important. When I ask God, listen, I just want God, just give me what I need. I don't need nothing else. 
I'm not caring about how he can turn me around and toss me up and take me on dates and buy me this and do that for me. I don't need that. I'm cool. I don't need all that. I done changed my life, so I'm good. I don't need all that. But I do like it, yes. But I don't need it. But what I do need is somebody to give a damn about me. I need that. I need a level of care that's beyond just caring about me because my, you know, I got a cute little figure or, I, or you got you got knowledge or what can I gain from you? No, I don't want that. I want to have what I need taken care of. When I sent that prayer up, y'all don't hear me though. When I sent that prayer up about care and about my needs being met, everything changed. I stopped caring about what a man could give me. And wanted to say, well, are you willing to share your time with me? Because that is priceless. A man can give you anything. He can give you a car. He can give you, buy you all kinds of stuff. And it don't mean a damn thing about him caring about you. Nothing. But if a man shares his time, his story, his space, his heart, his vulnerability, when he, when he shares that with you, now you're getting a man that loves you. That's what love looks like. It's not based upon what a man can do for you. It's not based upon how much money that man is spending on you. Don't have nothing to do with that. Because money doesn't mean shit. It doesn't. It's about what he, how, how he cares about you. Will he go to the depths for you? Will he protect your name? Will he look out for your kids for you? Those kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff you need to look at. Not based upon how much money this dude is spending. You can get dudes that will spend some money just to impress you. And you'll be like, ooh, I got me a boo that's going to buy me something. He's going to spend money on me and take me out and this and that. And don't care nothing about you. Because he got three other chicks that he's doing the same thing for. Because he can afford it. You think men with all that money, you think he really even knows what care is about? Nine times out of ten, like I said, he's got a side chick that he cares about. And that's because she ain't impressed with his money. I'm just saying, ladies, come on. Get with me here. You have to understand that men that know you are not in it just to get something or gain something from them. And you care about them anyway. And you're like, I don't want nothing from you. I'm not here for that. When, you're on a, when you care about a man based upon just him being who he is. Not wanting nothing from him, not deciding I want him, I want him around because I want him to do this for me. And you and you change and flip the script, be like, I don't want nothing from you, baby. I just want you to be here. I want you to care about me. I want you to care about my well-being. I want you to have my back. That's priceless to me. That is a black card that the ladies want to take and swipe and put the man in more debt for. <laughs> That's the black card to me. It's him giving a damn. Because I don't need his black card. I got my own credit card. I got that. I got my own vehicle. I got my own house. I don't need none of that. That don't impress me. And it's not no mansion, but it's mine, damn it. And I got my own stuff, so I don't need a man for that. I just don't. So, an approach to me about what you can give me is not going to impress me at all. It just doesn't. Because that's not what I'm on. And another thing, too. My sole existence isn't based upon being in a relationship either. Because my purpose is my spiritual mission, which is doing this and educating and coaching and encouraging and building a network. That is my passion. Not based upon how good a man can sex me. That's not, that's not what I care about. That's not my sole existence. I'm on something else. So that's why I tell ladies all the time, don't get caught up in the pleasure. There was an elder woman. Her name was Miss Marlene. I'll never forget it. She was an elderly, beautiful woman. It was a strange woman I happened to bump into literally at the store. And she said, you're a woman. You're a peacock. Never forget that. You are a woman and you are a peacock. Always remember that. And she told me, passion is for a moment. I said, I get that, Miss Marlene. She said it more than once. She said it often throughout the conversation we were having because she knew I was hard-headed as hell I'm not gonna listen so she knew I had to she had to keep saying it passion is for a moment what the hell does that mean okay passions for a moment okay I get it I had to let that penetrate in my soul you hear me 
because I'm a woman that is a passionate woman. I love passion. I love beautiful love making experiences. I love it. However, I'm not going to engulf my whole soul into that no more because I understand it's for a moment and then you you leave the passion and you get focused on your spiritual mission. Period. We can't get so caught up in pleasure that we lose sight of what the real purpose of our being is. And a lot of times we lose sight of that because we're so focused on, oh, he makes me feel good. Oh, he's so sexy. Oh, he's this and oh, he's that. Don't get it confused. Now, I appreciate beautiful black men and beautiful handsome men. Hey, listen, I am that chick. I do appreciate it. But I'm not overly uh, obsessed with it. I get it. They're, they're here for a reason. I appreciate it. Trust me. But at the end of the day, I have to know and be, make sure I'm balanced and understanding that it's not all about the pleasure, man. It's about understanding how important life is. When this wind is going up against my face, I have to appreciate it. When the grass is green and just blowing in the wind, I got to learn to appreciate it. That's real shit right there. Because when this is all said and done and I've done all the work and God sends me and asks me to come back to, the, to home, I got to make sure I'm proud of what I've done. Why in the hell am I here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why am I here? So when I understand I have a purpose and I matter and I'm not invisible, I'm, 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 I, I matter. And everybody on here matters. You all have a reason to be on the planet. Are you seeking to know why you're here? If you're not, you better get busy. Trust me. I love all of you. I'm so glad you guys are spending a little time with me. Because I'm not going to have you sit in here and just watch me for just nothing. I'm going I'm to pour something into your soul. That's what I do. So I'm just giving you the heads up. That if you are in this life just purely existing, you are wasting time. You're wasting time. You need to be focused on why you are here on the planet why are you here what is your mere existence and once you find that out get busy there is no such thing as sleep when you are busy in your purpose and fixated on your passion you just have to be moving to do that so i'm gonna go and look and see what Gigi was kicking some knowledge here she said uh she said, I look for a man who's strong enough to weather the storm, and that's more than just a notion or word said. If he can't show me he's strong enough to stand through the hard times. Um, uh, let's see. Through the hard times, I can't be with him. Very good point. Well, Gigi, I said earlier, you definitely want to be mindful of that. Um, a gentleman that is in your life um, and is fragile, you know, is, is, is quite costly. Trust me, I've had a fragile man in my life before, and it is exhausting. It is extremely, um, it's just extremely a lot, I'll put it that way. It's just a lot. And so when you get past the fact that, oh my God, I have a lot going on, and you realize, okay, um, he's just not able to withstand the storms. That doesn't mean you have to throw the person away. Understand that. You know, a lot of times if we don't believe that this person or, or people that have came into our life doesn't meet the qualifications to be a spouse or be somebody we date, we just want to discard them and throw them away like old, like old news or old trash. You don't have to do that. You can still have an engagement with the person. You can still be friends and you can still um, have some type of engagement with them. You don't have to throw them away because you guys are not compatible in that space. You can actually reinvent what you two are trying to do or how, how you are going to um, continue in this life together. You don't have to throw everybody away because they don't match uh, you as, a, as far as for a life partner or a spouse. It doesn't mean you have to throw them away. It just means, okay, we're not, we're not going to be in this, in this capacity. But the capacity we're in, it's actually kind of cool. So I'm going to keep you around. You're still cool. We can still hang out. We can still do our thing. But at the end of the day, we understand that we've hit our capacity. And we're just not going to go to the next level. That doesn't mean you throw them away. That just means that they are now compartmentalized in your life to be what they are. And it's nothing more and nothing less. So I hope that helped you guys. 
Um, when a man buys you things, he's paying for your services. <laughs> Jeezy silly. Well, you know, <laughs> sometimes that's the case. But, you know, um, let me put it out there. If you have a man that, that does buy for you, um, it's not always from a space of, it's not always from a space of that they're trying to use you or that they have a, a, a so-called motive. But what I was talking about is the men that are, um, you know, always buying because they're taught that women want to be uh, with a man that can supply her, her wants, not her needs, her wants. So he goes out and buys, 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 and buys stuff. And he believes that's his, that's his uh, way of showing he cares. Um, but only you know if a person cares about you. Now, if you have a man that cares about you and buys you stuff, that's different. I'm talking about the gentleman that's just buying you because he's just buying because he wants to get something from you. Be it that he wants, you know, you look the, you look the part to be on his arm. So he wants to impress other dudes or he wants to impress other people, his parents or whatever, because you look the part. So he wants to put you on his arm. But the girl he cares about is up the street or down the road or whatever. Nah, that's not okay. But understand, we just got to be mindful. Okay, sometimes, you know that isn't necessarily authentic the gifts are not being authentic they're being given for something they they, they he's got a motive behind that and that's not what you want um and then Gigi also said ownership and love are two different things it's important for us to learn the difference between the two uh-oh uh-oh Gigi. ownership baby girl ownership yes okay so let's talk about that for a second ownership right a lot of times we want to say we're in a relationship and that is my man, right? That is my man. That is my girl. And, you know, we, we need to get off of that because, you know, just because you are intentional with wanting to be together and cultivate a relationship doesn't necessarily mean that you are theirs per se. You've agreed to be together for whatever cultivated dynamic you're in. But that doesn't mean that that person isn't going to have other attractions. That doesn't mean that that person doesn't have a life outside of you. That doesn't mean that that person doesn't care about other people. So we got to get off of this ownership shit. Like Gigi said, everything is not about own. I own him. I own his thoughts. I own his eyes. You can't be looking at another woman when you in my presence and all that other shit. That's silly. We have to get past all of this stuff that we're focused on and start learning that, you know what, at the end of the day, we have some beautiful things that we can be acquiring if we would stop being so caught up in oh I want to do this and I want to go here and do that you have to sit down and say hold on it's not about my this is not about my needs it's about my wants so let me back up off of this real quick and think about you know if I desire to be with him or her someone else is going to find him or her attractive as well and, and, and I'm going to waste a lot of time being angry about it. My situation is I love fine brothers. So any gentleman I'm messing with, I already know it's going to come with a price. It's going to come with a lot of ladies liking them and desiring them. I would be exhausted trying to run in behind that. I ain't got that to do. So if we're intentional, we got an arrangement, an agreement, we doing our thing. Listen, I don't give a damn about no other woman. I don't waste my time on that. I don't waste my energy on jealousy. Because if she appreciates your beauty, she obviously can see what I see. So it's silly for me to be running in behind you talking about who is that and what's this and who's that girl. We got to get off this stuff, man. We are spending too much time on stuff that doesn't really truly matter. What matters is us being able to be free. And if we're free in ourself and we have a man or a woman that's beautiful or a man that's handsome in our life. We can't be sitting up here angry every time somebody else finds their beauty as well as our uh, as well as we do. Actually, I would hope someone else finds mine attractive. I tell you that I don't want nobody that nobody else wants. That don't make sense. <laughs> I don't want. I, I'm not that chick. I'm just not. And I'm not insecure in myself to worry about what another woman's gonna do for him. All right, man, please. I don't waste my time or energy on that mess. So we got to get off of this nonsense about we have to have. Uh, you can't be with other women and all that. That's silly shit. No, let's get off of that. Let's understand that people are going to have other attractions. It just is what it is. 
And then Gigi said, I'm so glad that you're speaking on the spiritual aspect of it. People don't realize that they can't take things that God created and leave them out. Gigi, you already know I'm big about spirituality. Listen, if you want a very solid, um, beautiful life partner that's designed for you, you have to get out of the car of life and let God drive it. Which means you've got to stop picking your people that you want to be with. You have to start being spiritually aligned with them. And see, God has a, 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 a bad, let, let me tell you something. God is bad with it. If you let God do it, then let me tell you something, honey. It's a whole nother level. When you let God set it up, it's a whole nother level. It's beautiful. It's, 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 it's on a whole nother level because God picks it by design. You hear me? You're not out here trying to figure out, well, he looks good, so he smells good, or his his financial stability is it matches what I desire and hit he'll he'll meet my comforts. No. We gotta sit back and say, hold on. What I need and what I desire is two different things. So if I if I get to the point where I let God pick him for me and stop trying to be the one to do all the extra, then guess what? I may have a better shot. At having somebody that is good for me. Somebody I need, not want. That changes the game, does it not? I just said, when we spend time alone and we learn what we need, it changes the game. Because now it's not about what a man can do for me and what he wants to do for me. And ooh, my baby, he's done this and done that. No, it's about what I need and what he and I both need. And how can, and it's not no good if I'm not, I mean, how good am I if I'm with a man and I don't know what I need? So he's here looking at me and I'm looking at him and I don't know what to tell him I need. I don't know. It's like, no, you should know this stuff. You want a love relationship, but you don't know what the hell love looks like. That's so ridiculous. you got to let God get in it for us. you got to let God help design it, but you got to take off the, you got to stop with all the controlling stuff. With all the face value. Because we look at men and women based off of face value. Okay? So somebody will see a handsome man and only look at his first dimension, which is his external body. But we ain't look past the, the body. We ain't look past none of that, nothing else. We didn't even wait to see what kind of heart he had. We just, oh my God, he's gorgeous. Okay? But what else? <laughs> There's a lot of handsome brothers that are dick. I mean, dicks. They're assholes. And you're like, damn, I picked this gentleman and he is a jerk to me. What was I thinking? I thought he was nice. You thought he was nice based upon his looks? You're going to be, you're going to get bamboozled every single time. And you don't want to do that. All right, so I like, uh, let's see what you got going on here, talent coach. You said, uh, he said he loves this. He said, purpose-driven life is so vital. Yes. Do you know that if you are not fulfilling your purpose in life, some people will still be in their predicament and die in it yes we are a solution to someone's problem absolutely Tyler coach you are not kidding yes love yes 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 i love it Gigi says that's exactly what i mean carla and sometimes it's just because he wants to walk away clean conscience you know that saying fair exchange is no robbery right so we want to make sure hey angela welcome thanks babe so yes we want to be mindful that when we're not, I mean, we're getting to the point where we're getting so caught up in what a man can do for us or what, a, or what, a, and even gentlemen, you know, I, I, you know, I always look out for y'all. So gentlemen, stop pulling out y'all's wallets for women. Stop doing that. Please, please, because you're not allowing that woman to care about you. You're allowing her to care about what you can provide her. And that is what you're building your relationship on. When you start buying a woman and say, hey, I'm going to buy you this. I'm going to take care of you with this. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do that for you. She's going to start getting lazy and not even really wanting to really think about how much value you are to her. What's going to be more valuable to her is what you do for her and how much you spend on her. So I tell you gentlemen all the time, don't get caught up in spending a bunch of money on a woman. Spend your time with her. Let her learn you. Become vulnerable to your woman. Okay? You got to show who you are to her. And that is what really a woman will learn to value. 
you learn to open up your heart bigger and better than opening up your wallet you will see that you have different type of women in your nucleus because women are going to be gravitating towards you not towards your money and a lot of times gentlemen you know women are caught up in their wants what can I get from him what can I gain let me tell you something we all have a picture of what we want in our relationship all of us I want to have this I want to have that I want to have this right we have our wants lined up and our desires but what we fail to ever realize is that do you really want to pay attention to what a man is giving you what comforts he can provide you rather than doing that on your own because you're less likely to get played when you when you have what you need and a man enters your life and is just here to share his story here to share his heart with you here to be vulnerable to you here to care about you and protect you and love you you don't need nothing from him you don't say oh I need you to buy me something I need you to do this for me I need you to do that for me he's there because he wants to be there with you there's nothing like it so gentlemen I cannot stress enough please stop spending all of your dollars and, and money on a woman because women don't know how in the hell they get in a situation where they're with a man and all they care about is how much he's gonna spend on me oh girl you can come with us and my man will buy it my man will pay for you and the next thing you know you're spending 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 and not managing what the hell you're gonna be doing in your retirement years as you're spending all this now you might have everything good but are you planning for your future you know senior years and how good you're gonna be then because if you let a woman take you to all every event take you every you better start saying no I had a daddy that told me no a lot I'm talking about no with a period like no <laughs> so when I'm in a, involved with a man and he says no you think I collapse over it hell no okay it's no <laughs> I don't care about that if I want something bad enough I get it my damn self I mean that's just what it is so we have to sit down and really look at it for what it's worth. Hold on, let me think about that for a minute. If I'm with a man and he wants to take care of me and do some something nice for me, I'll appreciate it. But I also say I'm not here for that. I'm not here for you to buy me. That's not why I'm here. I'm here because I like sharing time and spending time with you. I like us to have our conversations. I like it when you're vulnerable. I like it when you tell me your perspective and your point of view. I like it when you challenge me and tell me, well, why don't you try something new? Do something different. I like that you're not all about my looks. You see the inside of my soul. I like that. Not about my external beauty. I had nothing to do with that. But I had a lot to do with this inner beauty I got. <laughs> a lot to do with that. But my external beauty had to do with my birth mother and, 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 who, and my father whatever so I don't have nothing to do with the external beauty taking care of it yes but as far as you know this no I had a lot to do with who I became as a woman you know the beautiful thing about us is we're not born but we become women that's the beautiful thing about it we become women just like gents y'all become grown sexy men y'all become men we're not born this way but you know there's a lot of grown people that are still teenagers they act like it <laughs> they still act like teenagers and you're looking at them like you've grown as hell why are you still acting like a child I'm confused oh Lord I'm telling you I'm trying to tell you so um, and then uh, talent coach you said because he is cash full don't mean he can cater for your emotional needs right so again like he said his cash his cash can only provide certain comforts and so when you have cash or you have uh, you have a better convenience because that's what you're getting when when someone is is financially stable or has a financial backing or has more financially they have conveniences that you don't or we don't have that has to worry about paycheck to paycheck or financially I got to make sure I'm paying into a 401k because once I become a senior ain't nobody gonna take care of me but me so I gotta make sure I'm focusing on that so that kind of stuff you we have to look at 
But a lot of times we don't want to sit down and really look at the fact that we want a man to take care of us. No. Our outward beauty has nothing to do with that. We have to cultivate the inward beauty because that never dies. You hear what I'm saying to you? My mom's been gone since 2003. And my dad still gets phone calls about my mom's beauty to this day. That's 15 years ago she's been gone. And he still gets phone calls about my mother's beauty and what she did for people. That's timeless. This, this will go. You know what I'm saying? When we pass on, it goes. That's it. But what we've done and how we help people and how we impart it into people, that lives on. There's the beauty right there. So when gentlemen get all caught up about, oh, girl, you look good and you fine, it's like, I appreciate it. But that's not really my real beauty. But I'm not going to show you my real beauty until I'm spending what with you? Time. Energy. Exchange. Conversations. Mindsets. Opinions. Things like that. Connections. Those are things that I care about. You know, so I'm hoping y'all are getting something from this. Be sure to share this video, man. I just, I really want people to get out of thinking that, you know, you want a relationship, but you really don't understand what it is, per se. You really don't understand how involved you have to be and become in order to reach the higher height of what you need. You know, it's vitally important that we get away from getting so caught up in what somebody else can do for us and do for ourselves. Because once we get that power, we can't get easily swayed. Can't just any man come over here and swoop me off my feet? <laughs> come on now. You got to come better than that, baby. I, I got some work so I'm doing. Encourage that. You want to move me? Move me? Hey, move into my works. I'm busy. Because I'll tell you what, I can't, I can't, listen, I can't be a man's world. I can't, and I won't make a man my world. You know what I'm saying? My spirituality is my balance. That's my base. That's my foundation. And that's what I base my life on. That's my world. I can make you important and significant. You can be that, yes. But I can't make you my whole world. And I want all people not just women but men too stop making another person your world because you will collapse if something happens to them or the relationship you won't be able to handle it so we have to stop saying that someone is our world someone is 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 more than just uh you know a person in our life that we care about we got to stop we got to stop we got to stop we got to start focusing on loving people learning our purpose, getting spiritually centered. And again, like I said, get out that car of life, man. Let God drive it. Let God do the driving of your life. I'm trying to teach y'all something. When you let God drive your life, you won't have to ever worry about not having your needs met. Your needs only you know and God knows. So you have to really focus on that. So you have to say, God, please fill me up with becoming neutral so once you get neutral you get balanced when you get out of always wanting the pleasure or you get always wanting and in, running into pain because some people get all about pain you all only want to get about always want to get focused on pain or always want to get focused on pleasure get balanced get centered get neutral and allow God to, to bless you with what you need and God will when you say a sincere, I'm telling you, this never failed me. Whenever I have said to God, I need you and I want you to drive my life. I have not been failed yet. And that I can guarantee. I have not been failed yet. When I have come to God in my sincere heart space, I've asked God for forgiveness to help me with forgiveness. And I got it. I asked God to, to provide me with all of my needs being met, and I got it. I learned to stop being so caught up on what things I can have and start learning about what things I can do to help the planet, and I got it. I went to God and asked for it. 
I didn't ask human or human or any person to show me that. I went to my heavenly father. Hey, listen, I need some help here. If I, if this, if this part of my life, and I, I went through all dimensions of my life, I said, if these things aren't met in my life, I will become imbalanced and can be easily reckless or I can be easily off center and making indecisions. So God, I need you to make sure by all means that this part of my life, whatever dimensions that I have put forth on the table to God, I said, look, these part, this part of my life, I need you to please make sure this is taken care of and I can take it from there. I will do the work and be obedient in what you want me to do. I will quiet my life down. I'll get rid of all chaos, all distractions, all people, places, and things that don't make sense for my life. I'll get rid of that. And then I will be able to listen to what you are explaining or encouraging me to do. And when, when I do that, as long as my needs are met, I will stay focused on, on this planet, on what my purpose is. And when I came to God and asked for that to be done, I have not been failed yet. Not even once. And on top of that, God has helped me with discernment. So now I have a level of discernment of what's good and what's not. What's wrong and what's good or, or what's iffy and what's not. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. Because another thing I asked God to give me was a sign. God, if I'm doing something right, please show me a sign so I know I'm in the right direction. And I get it every time. No questions asked. This, I can guarantee you. Till this day, I have had that. I have had God give me everything that I asked for. And it wasn't even about wants either. It was all about me being open and allowing God to do what he, God's job is. Which is to help navigate me. Because God knows if I drive the stuff, drive the ship, or drive the car, it's going to end up in a ditch every time. And I was just tired of being right in this wreckage. Why am I constantly in a wreckage? Every time I drive, I end up on the side of the road. end up in the uh, center of the road or over here under a tree some damn where in life. Because I, I can't steal the wheel like God can. So I said, listen, I'm done. I got out the car of life and I got in the passenger seat buckled up. And God looked at me and was like, you sure about that? You positive? Even was a little hesitant. God was a little hesitant because he knows I'm going to try to grab the wheel or take the gear shift or change some things. Well, Jesus, I don't know if I want to do that. Nope. I sat patiently and rolled on with it and said, look, I ain't worried about it. You got me. I'm cool. Changed my life forever. Changed my life forever. And it can do the same for you. You just have to have a sincere spirit. You got to tell God what you need. You can't come to God and ask him for all your wants because that's not going to happen. Like I told you, my, my father, my physical father on the planet told me no a lot. A lot. You hear me? So your heavenly father will do the same. Out of love, of course. Because if you get all your wants, you already know you ain't going to know how to act. <laughs> you can't have all those wants. You just can't. That's just not what it is. That's just not, that's not how this is going to happen. So ask God for your needs and those get supplied. Trust me. Trust me. Because I tell you what, I have not been failed yet. And I'm enjoying my purpose. I am. I love it. I get up excited. Sometimes I'm up at 3, 4 in the morning. I get people inboxing me. Hey, good morning. Hey, I'm up. Doing my purpose. Writing, reading, whatever I got to do to make sure while I'm here on the planet, I'm imparting to people. And I'm encouraging people. But in order for me to do that, I had to get my needs met or I would be all over the place. I wouldn't be doing what I need to do. I would be all over the place. So when I told God I needed, I needed to be clear on what I need, you know, God hooked me up. I'm cool now. So, you know, I hope you guys got the messages. I hope you guys uh, really have a beautiful Friday. I'm, I'm surprised that all of y'all sitting here with me aren't out doing something it's beautiful it's like 80 80 degrees i think where i am i'm in ohio so it's kind of warm but um you know i just wanted to i wanted to impart in you because you know you guys i care about and i know that if it's not you it's someone else that i can help and 
in order to do that, you know, I do this so that I can help and, and assist you guys. And if you guys are not a part of my group right now, which is live with Carla Nicole, please go on there and send me a request to be a part of the group. I got some fun stuff coming up. Um, I'm doing a, um, a wisdom focus group right now. That's members only. And, um, it's powerful, man. I'm, I'm helping to, uh, impart in lives and that's what I'm here to do. Um, right now we're doing a resolve call, um, and resolving somebody's issue. So any of you that have issues or concerns or questions or something going on in your life that you want to talk to me, off the line, let me know. And, uh, I can take it to my, to my group, which is the wisdom focus group. And we can sit down and have a conversation about how you can get to the resolution. So let me know about that too. And like I said, it's called the Wisdom Focus Group. And um, if you guys want to be a part of that or be a, a member, let me know. I'll give you the details on that. All right. So like I said, everybody, thank you so much for joining me this evening. It, it's been awesome. It's been fun. I hope you guys can use what I gave you. If not, hopefully someone on your page can use it. And uh, I'm out of here, all right? So it's Carla Nicole signing off. Best kept. Have a good day. Bye.